another day, another vlog. What a break. Um, well, I guess you probably want to know where I've been. Um, unfortunately, with some sad news in my family, uh, I probably didn't want to tell you about it. I was, as you can imagine, uh, my poor old pops had passed away. Um, long battle with cancer. And he fought really well. And unfortunately, just, yeah, finally got him. Unfortunately, the old cancer sticks uh, finally won their battle against him. So, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks of uh, mourning. I'm trying to understand, trying to learn where I'm at. And so, yeah, a lot, a lot on. And to be honest, I just wasn't in the mood to do fun, I guess. I wasn't, I wasn't ready to be fun and excited about stuff at that stage. Um, so, yeah, I want to, I guess... 46 years with my dad, what a legend, I uh, love him, uh, yeah, it's pretty sad, so yeah, I just sort of, two weeks, I know it's sort of probably gone, it feels like forever for me as well, but um, yeah, it was, a, it was a big thing, had a lot of amazing people come out to his funeral, which was awesome, uh, so the thank you to those people, a lot of kind words, a lot of phone calls from friends and mates all across Australia uh, to, to see how it's going and check just check in to, you know, to say hello, which is what we all should do for friends and family. It's that's when you, we all need that that comforting fact. It's it's good to know people are thinking about you. So, on that perspective, it was really really awesome to see the outpouring of, I guess, friendship and compassion after something like that happens. Um, it's great to be able to get that support. I'm very lucky to have so many good friends and so many good friends of the family and my brother and sister and my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law and his wife and kids and every everyone that was there was just amazing. So if you uh, were there, thank you for coming. Uh, it was awesome. And, yeah, I guess sort of you, you can sort of dwell in things. I, I sort of tend to think, well, I've got so much that I want to achieve and do and still make him proud. So I want to keep going and doing it. And what this is one of those things that I love and enjoy and I love coming to speak to you every day and hopefully – <laughs> hopefully give you some tips and tricks and whatever in the world of photography tech and all that sort of stuff so yeah that's why i'm back um back to normal i go back to work i was supposed to go back to r and r this week this week so i was it's no use going back for one day flying in the state to get back for one day um and then flying back out again to have nowhere to go because we've moved as well so had the move three weeks did all the move out of the house my wife and my son's been in Brisbane for a couple of weeks ever since the end of our three-week holiday, which was amazing. I think that was the last time I talked to you. Uh, so I didn't really get a chance to soak up that as well too. So that was, I've got a lot there. I've got, I think, 16 days, which is basically 16 videos. I put my first video up, which was from a hike last year in December before I left work. So, And I've still got another one from that to do. So I'm way, way behind. But good news is coming for the channel, photography-wise and journey-wise and just amazing location-wise, the whole southwest of WA. I've got extensive footage, drones, photography, chats to you, hikes. One of the best hikes of my life I've ever done at Bluff Knoll to get through. So these are all videos coming. So there's heaps of heaps of stuff to make up for the two weeks I've been out. So I've got to now sit down and get all this stuff done. So I've got a few more days here before I fly back in state to go back to work. So I'm going to just sit down here. And my, uh, my lovely brother-in-law has kindly let me stay at his house underneath, which is amazing. Uh, again, just that support's just just friggin' phenomenal. And, uh, and it's sort of a good opportunity where I can actually sort of do what I need to do to, I guess... It's, I guess it's my way of venting and, and showing Dad sort of that everything he did was good because I've got his work ethic. I've got that, that will to want to just keep going and, and make better things and do better things, which is what he was all about. So heaps to do, heaps coming in the channel. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I've looked at some of the footage uh, from Esperance, Albany, Denmark, in those areas, Bluff Knoll, and it's, yeah, it's pretty mind-blowing. I had to finish KT's Canyon, which just went up 
this morning. It took me a while. The internet or the phone internet in Darwin is terrible. Uh, it, yeah, it literally took me five hours to upload the, a 28 minute video on my phone, which is really strange because I can actually do quicker at work. It's very weird. Go yeah, from Esperance, which had 5G and like 5,000 people or 10,000 people, to Darwin's got 110,000 and it, I can only get two bars of 4G. Telstra, yet again. Now, having said that, big news on the internet front. <clears throat> I've talked about it many times on the channel. If you're new to the channel and just pop by, just signed up, just subscribe. That's fantastic. I uh, do tech news reviews and all that sort of stuff. I have a bit of a chat at the start, then we go into some gear. Now, the big news I have been telling about for a while, Starlink. Starlink is signing up for Australia. The end of Telstra, Optus, all those crappy internet providers uh, with terrible service for us people that live and work in the bush, it's done. It, it's over for them. Basically, you can go, if you go to Starlink now, you can sign up to be a basically first one in the, in the, in the pit. Uh, it costs you a thousand bucks Australian. And then I think it's about 120 bucks a month. 100, no, 100 bucks a month and about seven, eight hundred dollars for the gear, for the sign up. That gives you a little satellite dish. A uh, little package that you've got to set up at your house or if you're at camp, set up on your room. Tickety-boo. Because uh, that's what I'm after. It. That's my biggest thing. And I can take my internet package with me wherever I go. You get it, download an app onto your phone to locate your satellite dish, set that up, and away you go. Now, they're not saying that the speeds are going to be amazing from the start. You know, when I first started in Canada, it was tricky. 50 to 100 megs. <laughs> That's terrible there. For us, that's that's NBN. <laughs> we can't even get that now if you've got... I got, had fiber optic to the house in Perth and I couldn't get 100 megs a second. So now, for the same price that I paid Telstra, or actually less than I paid Telstra, I can get Starlink and get 50 to 150 as a beta user. Now, notice I said beta user because... Once they get all their crap sorted with this area of the hemisphere, that's going to shoot up. I think currently Canada's around three to 400 megs a second on the same service. You don't have to pay any more, still 100 bucks, and it's three to 400 megs. I can get three to 400 megs in Australia. It'll cost me 1,000 bucks a month through Telstra. So Starlink, if you live rural, in the bush, uh, outside a major capital city, even if you just get crap NBN or the prices are bloody ridiculous, Starlink, go sign up. They're talking about mid-year rollout, but they're taking people to sign up now. So if you want to get on, get on. But the tricky part I have now is I don't have an address. <laughs> That's a pain in the butt. So I've got to, um, I don't know whether I can put that or put my camp address. I'm not sure if that makes a difference. I've got to contact them and see if I can actually take it with me and how big the boxes and stuff are, whether I need one for a home and then one for I can take to work and use the same. So I'm not sure on that. So I'll let you know. I'll keep you updated because I am definitely going so I can take to Telstra. I, yeah, super stoked about that. Happy as Larry. So, yes, all happening in that front, Starlink. So big news there. If you have been following the channel for a while, you know I hate Telstra. Uh, you, This is for you, Starlink. Go sign up your email. I think you've got to pay $100 now as a deposit, which is fully refundable. If you change your mind, you can take that 100 back whenever you want. But sign up for 100 bucks now. And then mid-year, when the rollout happens, you can then sign up. It'll cost you that, I said, said like seven, 800 bucks, I think it is, for your kit. That gives you everything you need to set it up yourself. So it's really easy. And then you're away and you're into the future. So get on that horse. I think it's going to be a, a very fast horse. Now, uh, camera-wise, we're going to get over some camera stuff. Uh, we're going to look at some stuff from McDonald's. But other big news, I guess, this week, I'll try to go back and just get some stuff. I wasn't going to go back over the last two weeks and worry about it. Trying to just, I was just going to move onwards. Now, NASA. NASA landed on Mars. Another little uh, state-of-the-art six-wheel robot rover. Perseverance was dropped onto the planet's surface. We've got... Super high res color images. We're getting soil samples. We're getting all that stuff. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. It's, I guess, since the '80s, we haven't had much happen in the in that space realm. And to be excited about 
you know, that adventure and exploration and, and new worlds and all that sort of stuff we dreamed as as kids. I don't know if kids dream about that nowadays, if they dream about exploring new worlds and conquering and go out and finding new worlds. It, it seems like they just get lost in video games instead of going out and finding their own video game in real life. So it's that's to me was a pretty big deal. Uh, I know it was for a lot of people around the world. So NASA, congratulations. Great stuff happening there. Uh, stuff with Musk and Starlink and all the and all the SpaceX and all the crazy stuff that's happening at the moment. It's a pretty exciting time to be alive. Other big news, if you haven't seen it, the 55,000 people getting stabbed in the arm with a needle in the last tw 24 hours, is Australia started their vaccine rollout. So that was pretty good news. It was huge, awesome. It was great to see the Prime Minister go and get his jab. But I don't think we need to see a 24-hour rolling update of every person in every hospital, the first one there to get a friggin' needle in their arm. I hate needles. I'm not a big fan of them. I'm going to go and get the thing, and I have no problems with that. But I don't think it's newsworthy to be punching it on 24 hours a day. I think everyone got the picture yesterday uh, when the Prime Minister had his jab. It was That was the solidarity thing. Hey, we're all together. Go get this. Pow, pow. I'm good to go. Ah, he didn't die, so it's all good. I think that was, I understand that's newsworthy. I don't think we need 24 hours straight. I'm, I'm sure we're going to get more tomorrow of people getting stabbed in the arm with a needle. So <laughs> can we cut that out? I'm like, it's all great, but yeah, it's just a vaccine. It's, yeah. I know to some people to be locked down, it's probably really awesome, but I don't think we need to see people getting shoved in the arm with a needle. It's a little bit disturbing to us people that don't like needles. Yes, I'm a wuss. I'll say it now before you... You put it in the comments, I'm happy. Yes, I'm a wuss. It's all good. Now, um, Lauer come out with a new lens, uh, the RF 11mm 4.5 full frame lens. Uh, 699 US dollars. Super tiny though. Uh, a little bit expensive, 700, so it's about a thousand bucks Australian, but 254 grams and only 6.3 centimeters long. That is miniature. Uh, they make amazing lenses. Um, I think I've got an affiliate link down below because I love their lenses. I, I can't afford to have all their lenses. I want either a 12 or a 15. I think those two, for me, wide angle, because you really don't need autofocus for landscape. That wide angle is perfect. Um, that 11 mil, don't know if that's a, it doesn't look like it's got much of a fish eye in it. When I've looked at some of this stuff on the 11 mil range, it doesn't really tend to have a fish eye in it. They do fantastic stuff with their glass. Uh, but that's another one out there. This is an amazing travel. So if you, I guess if you're a real estate agent or doing a lot of architecture stuff and you're on the, on the move and you want something light and you've got a nice little pocket camera, like a little M50 or a little RP or something like that, in, or something on those lines or a Leica, it is coming out in the Leica, the Sony, uh, the Nikon and the L mount. So it's covering the whole, whole brand, uh, I think, era. So area, not error. <clears throat> so look, it should be a great lens. So go check that out. A little bit expensive though, I think. 700 bucks. They are they are great lenses. They just, just a, if they could just trim like 100 to 150 bucks off that price range, I think they'd become super, super competitive. It's, I understand it's tricky when you're making good things. You've got to pay the price. Just that little bit more off it. When it converts to Australian, it just, just cuts deep. There's a... What you can get for a thousand dollars of a lens in the second hand market. So you're looking at a 70 to 200 mint condition 2.8 L series Canon second hand for that price. So it's a tough, toughy to sort of spend that. So, but it is there if you are a Lauer fan like myself. Black Magic, what a little camera. They bought a new 6K Pro. Uh, look, doesn't look too much different. It's got a tilty screen now, doesn't have that. I think the biggest thing I, I noticed was. Uh, carbon fiber polycomposite, so a total new chassis, fully strong, rigid, like they've done a really good job. Aussie company, so I'm a big fan of supporting Aussie companies in the photography market. Uh, two and a half grand US, that's a pretty good price range, 6K. That's a damn good, they got a long history with this 6K, so they've done it before, people are using it. It's coming with two mini XLR inputs, the tilter screen, a better, bigger battery, Optional EVF, so you can mount on an EVF if you are going to take photos with it as well. So if you're going to use it for that, in that regards, 
probably not really what it's designed for, but it's still there as an option, so that's pretty cool. 13 stops of dynamic range, that's pretty darn awesome. ISO up to 25,600. Again, they're not good for a photography side, but for a video side, that's probably a solid 25,000 that you can hit and still have recordable information. So, but a cool EF mount. That's the only thing I sort of like, mm, if you're going to bring a new one, why wouldn't you come out, and especially the new body, wouldn't you come out and go RF and update to the RF glass? I thought that would have been a better option given, given those brand new glass with that brand new body and carbon fiber and all that new stuff and hit it hard with the RF. So EF mount is a little bit strange. Yeah, sure, there's a ton of lenses. They hit a wider range. I can understand that. But if you had that RF mount, you can still put an adapter on for those people that are going to do that. So I thought that would have been a better option. That seemed a little strange to me. Uh, Built-in 2, 4, and 6 neutral density filters. That's pretty darn cool in such a small package. Upgraded 1,500-nit uh, HDR screen, that tilting screen. That's awesome, bright daylight, that's really handy to have. Optional grip, so you can put the bottom grip on, you would have seen that on the thing, so that's cool. Got all the controls in there. Removable battery door, so you can plumb it in and go hard powered if you're in a studio like here. Um, Built-in speaker, unusual. So you can hear volume, you can check, check your uh, volume out, that's pretty cool. Uh, four shockproof speakers, so in there it's got built-in speakers. Realistically, I wouldn't even worry about speakers. No one's going to use that. Concentrate on the camera. Get good XLR. You've got good XLR ports. Put a good mic port in there, I guess, for a cheaper guys. You're going to go Rode or whatever your microphone versions are. You're going to do that. Uh, you're not really going to go and use normal speakers. So, <clears throat> strange. Now, big sensor, 6144 by 3456 Super 35 sensor. And... My favorite thing, Blackmagic, Aussies, doing it right, you can record directly to an SSD, not just the SD card. How, again, I don't know why all these new cameras can't do that. Uh, that's just crazy. SSDs, tall, small, little tiny, small things you have in your pocket that can do one terabyte and then go straight in your laptop. Still, on the new cameras, you can't do it. Crazy. So that's great to see from them. They're still doing that. Now, also on another side, the more cameras, Sony X FX3, 12 megapixel, full framed, IBIS, no RAW, two XLR ports, same battery as A7S3, four grand US. Uh, looks a bit small. It looks smaller in the picture, but it's actually looks it's actually big and chunky, probably around the C70 size. So yeah, it's a little bit bigger, but it looks like it's got that A6600 sort of body shape I guess it's probably the easiest way to put it that compact camera look but it's a big video camera monster 4k 120 frames a second so that's pretty darn cool realistically probably needs a little bit more I don't know if it's an it's good enough to sort of differentiate from the a7s3 uh a7s3 is a true hybrid you can do photos and this amazing video uh this is more cast towards video so realistically this is, get, this is probably going to suit a lot of people, but it's probably not going to suit photographers that want to do video. So if you are a video guy or lady, um, this is, might be something up your alley. It's getting a lot of press, so it's, it's probably, knowing Sony, it's probably d bloody darn good. Um, but four grand US, that's six, six odd thousand. You know, I'd, that's like A7S three as a photographer first uh, and video second. I have to say that A7S III is just a just a fantastic all-round package. Um, and this FX3 is a little bit more niche brand, I guess. So if it's in your niche, uh, definitely go check that out. It's, uh, but I think it'll be a fantastic product. Now, last but not least, Maccas, uh, Denmark, teamed up with Paul Cunningham, their country's best chef. He's won Michelin Awards. They've made the McDonald's... Uh, select burgers or whatever it is their specialty range over there sold out in two weeks uh it was a called sorry i just put my book down i should have read that first the homestyle bernays burger uh basically a michelin burger they're trying to sell put it off as and uh well it worked two as i said two weeks sold out completely 
100% beef, Bernays sauce, potato sticks, smoked onion puree, roasted onions, salad, uh, melted cheese, and a brioche bun. Doesn't sound too bad. <clears throat> We've had, uh, we get some specialty ones here, but not sort of that fancy. The smoked onion puree, be pretty cool to see that in effect and see how actually good is it pre-made and a little bit yucky after it's been sort of rehashed. Um, very interesting. Great to see McDonald's actually having a crack and trying to get some like quality stuff in there. And you know, burgers don't have to be crap. It's been proved with grilled and all these other amazing burger joints that can make healthy and fresh and really tasty burgers. Doesn't have to be mass produced. McDonald's has got better at that, although all their burgers have shrunk. Definitely, hundred percent. Even my eyes are getting bigger, or they're shrinking. It's like meat pies in Australia. They're shrinking at a fast rate. And it's scary. They're going to be extinct soon. It'll cost you three dollars for a, for a, a little mini pie soon. <laughs> but that's about it. Um, great to be back. Monday. I'll be here tomorrow. Uh, another day, another week. We're back on. Thanks again for your support. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. Hopefully, you've gone through some old videos and watched some of the photo videos or the old whatever videos. You guys over on the podcast. Thanks very much for hanging around. Hope you. Uh, Hope you haven't been disappointed, as I'm sure you can understand, as most have. Uh, it's been a tough, tough time for the family and a tough time for me, as with all people that lose someone they love. So thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate your support, and it's great to be back to see all your smiling faces yet again for some more fun in 2021. Rightio, guys. Whether you're going that way, that way, I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.